Okay, so what I've got here today is my rising star predictions for season 2022. So to start out, we've got Heath Chapman. So I think he'll come number five in the process. And look, I, I think there'll be quite a few in this mix. So whether it's a Jake Bowie, whether it's a Lockie Jones, I could name another five, six, seven, eight players that would really be in this contention for this five spot. But um, yeah, look, with a Heath Chapman, I've really been impressed by what I saw with him during the Amy match and also during the practice game, I heard he was equally strong in his performance. So um, yeah, look, with injuries getting in the way in his first season, I think really in this second year, it'll prove to be a breakout year for him. Um, so yeah, watch out for him because I think he'll be one of the pieces that really, I guess, help that young Fremantle core forward and really, I guess, show that promise for the future because I think Fremantle's youth is among the best in the competition, the way I'm seeing it at the moment. Um, moving up to the number four spot. So we've got Josh Ward. So, um, yeah, with a Ward, why I see him coming fourth, and I could say he's either a three or four. Um, but yeah, why I've got him at four. So I'm watching him again during the Amy match. Well, he was Hawthorne's best midfielder. So he is on that level. So, um, and of course for Hawthorne in that match, you had no Tom Mitchell, no Jager O'Meara. So look, that's a factor, but with a Ward, you could say he's either that third best midfielder, or if you want to give credit to James Warple, who of course has a best and fairest, well then Ward's probably Hawthorne's fourth best midfielder. So I'm fully expecting Ward to play a prominent midfield role, and look, no doubt he'll have some outside minutes, but I think he'll be quite a regular at um, centre bounce attendances. So um, yeah, watch out for him. Is all class, wins his own ball, finds a heap of it. So um, that's what you can expect from Ward. Um, and of course his last month of the NAB league last year was phenomenal and sort of on a pretty similar level to a Nick Dacos. So, um, credit where it's due, Ward is a really good player and he's going to have a good year for Hawthorne. Um, moving up. So I've got Josh Rochelle at number three, um, for Adelaide. So, and he's one, he was ready for AFL level at, in 2019. So even at that young age, he was dominating in the NAB league and, um, yeah, just whether as, as a forward, as a midfielder, this guy can ball. So um, where he's going to be used this year, of course, it'll be as a forward for Adelaide. Um, they'll use him both not only for his scoreboard impact, but also as a playmaker, really looking for those inside 50 targets. So Adelaide will really utilize him almost as a go-to guy and really, I guess, play through him as much as they possibly can. So um, yeah, certainly watch out for that this year because I think he's going to have a sensational year. Um, and in the future, I think we'll be seeing him in at some center bounces because he can actually win first possession through the midfield, despite being that really sub 180. So um, he has a really exciting player and very advanced game. So whether he has the upside of some others, who knows, but um, certainly in terms of what he's going to do this year, he's going to absolutely be a factor for Adelaide. And I'd say of both Ward and Rochelle, I think they can be top 10 players on their respective list. So for Hawthorne, I think Ward's going to be a top 10 player. And Rochelle, I think for Adelaide, will be a top 10 player this year. So no mucking around with those guys. And then to move up to number two and number one, well, I've got Nick Dacos at number two. So, um, and I've mentioned this in all my fantasy videos. I mentioned this draft time last year, and I'm going to say it again with Dacos. This guy in the NAB League last year, he went for 36 disposals, two goals a game. Never happened before. No one's even hit that disposal level, let alone being able, even at 30 disposals, to hit one goal a game. So that's the level of Nick Dacos, where you just play through him every play and really just continue to look for him as much as possible. So what you can expect from him this year, he'll go for 25 disposals a game in his sleep across halfbacks. So, and he should get some midfield opportunities. He'll probably get some opportunities up forward too. Um, but yeah, I'm fully expecting him to have a really strong year. And I think he'll establish himself right away as a top five player for Collingwood. I think you'd be hard pressed to name five players better than him by the end of the season, because I don't think that list will really exist, frankly. So you've got a first year player on that level. So Collingwood fans be excited because, um, this guy, he was round one ready last year and he would have been a top 10 player on Collingwood's list then. So that's how good Dacos is. As for a Horn Francis, well, I'm every bit as bullish, if not more, as you can probably tell by the ranking at number one. So 
With a Horn Francis, look, he's not going to find the amount of ball that Dacos does. That's the natural disclaimer. But he will play a higher impact per possession game. So it'll be a 70-30 split forward mid is what I'm expecting. And it's just how influential he is. So whether is he's playing through the midfield or forward, he's going to p- apply that pressure like almost no one in the competition can, number one. Um, if he's through the midfield, well, he can win his own ball. He's a very strong contested ball winner, but then he has that burst out of stoppages. So you've got those components and weapons there. And then as a forward, well, he's got the aerial ability. He can win the ground balls really well. Um, one-on-one, he's dangerous, um, can hit the scoreboard. So you've got all these factors there. And again, as per when he plays through the midfield, well, he pl- applies that pressure. So um, with a Horn Francis, he's just absolutely going to be a difference maker for North Melbourne this year. And as I said with Dacos for Collingwood, who will be a top five player, I'm saying this year Horn Francis will be a top five player on North Melbourne's list. He is that good. So um, lock him into your fantasy teams, super coach teams. Same with Dacos, same with Rochelle, same with Ward. These guys are just going to be that good this year. So, um, And it was very obvious for those that watch the Amy games, even for a Dacos and Horn Francis who... Um, just dominated in those games and just looked fantastic. So, um, and with a Horn Francis, it's important to realize he was playing against men last year at Sandfall League level. And come finals time, during that final series, he established himself as the best player in that competition. So, and you've got AFL players running around at that level. So, um, it's really phenomenal how good he is. And he had a quarter in that very last final where it felt like he could go off for four or five goals in that quarter. So that was the level of difference he was making when he was pushed forward. So, um, yeah, look, with the Horn Francis, he's that level of excellence, really. So, um, yeah, get excited, North Melbourne fans. You've got a good one. But really, it's a 1A, 1B scenario with Horn Francis and Dacos. They're both going to be terrific. And it's a 3A, 3B with Rochelle and Ward. You can put him in any order. Doesn't matter. Just know they're going to be great this year. Okay, so to go through some of the betting. So as a quick disclaimer, I don't advise anyone to bet on anything relating to sports or any topic. I think it's one of the worst decisions you can possibly make with your money. Um, And if you're interested in what you can do with your money, that would be a much smarter decision. Um, Get behind my investing channel. I'll I'll leave a link in the description below. And um, hopefully that gives you a bit more of a financial education and gives you a bit more knowledge as to, I guess, some better decisions you can make. Um, But yeah, going through the rising star list. So um, you've got Dacos and Horn Francis at one and two. I I think these odds should really be even because they're, it's a 1A, 1B scenario. Um, But it sounds like obviously a lot of Collingwood supporters are putting their money on Dacos. Um, but yeah, from there, you've got Rochelle and Ward. Understandably, it's a 3A, 3B. So I happen to agree with sports bet there. Um, and then moving down the list, Bowie. Look, I think he'll rate really highly. So I can understand that. I, I think he'd be a top 10 finisher would be my tip there. Braden Campbell. I can understand him being on the list. I'd fully expect him to be nominated. Um, Logan McDonald. I think he'll continue to progress. He should get a nomination at some point. Um, Heath Chapman possibly could be higher, though, look, I don't think he'll win it by any means. So um, that's a fine spot. Um, A weird one here, Yugo Hagen. So, um, yeah, look, I know he's a number one overall pick, but, um, yeah, look, I don't think he'll start the year as the best 22 player for the Dogs. So I think he'll take a while to break his way in and really earn his position. So given that, he's not a realistic chance for the rising star. Um, Hobbs, I don't think we'll see him round one. I, I don't think even probably the start of the season. Um, it'll really be a case of probably if or when in injuries happen through the Essendon midfield. I think that's probably more when you get a stretch of games from Hobbs. And then a Finn Callahan. So even though he's a num- number two pick, I think really those opportunities with GWS this year will be pretty scarce. So through the midfield, obviously the Giants have an incredible group so it's hard to get opportunities so if we do see him it's probably more so in maybe it's an outside role maybe it's generating drive across half back but um yeah look the Giants will be hard to break into so you might just see him for maybe a stretch of games maybe it's just a small handful so um don't expect much there um Josh Gibkiss look I think he probably could be a chance to get nominated and look I think he could become a regular for Richmond but um, yeah, I think it's probably a bit high to have him realistically, I would have thought. 
I don't think he'll be that much of a factor this year, at least given, again, first year key defender. Um, and he'll play a fairly negating game. Might just intercept a little, but he's not going to rebound or do anything flash much. Um, Jai Newcomb, look, I think he'll continue to improve. Impressed in sort of, I guess, that latter part of last year after being picked in the mid-season draft for Hawthorne. So I think he'll continue to progress and be a piece there. Lockie Jones, look, I think he'll continue to improve, be a good piece for um, Port Adelaide. And I think he can establish himself as a regular this year. So um, he was already, even last year, physically mature, ready to go and ready to impact. So, um, And I think in the future, he'll be a star midfielder when those opportunities really arise and there's those, I guess, midfield minutes for him to absorb. So yeah, watch for him to be a star of the future, but um, probably doesn't win the rising star this year, given he'll probably just remain in defense and um, be looked at there. Neil Erasmus, I think he's got the chance to have a good season and really, although I don't think he starts the year, I think he could possibly break past, maybe it's a Will Brody perhaps. And I think then possibly those um, opportunities could arise as probably a bit of a combo mid forward where he's got the ball winning through the mids and he can push forward and take a grab. So a bit like almost a mini fife, if you want to call him that. Um, don't think he'll be as good nearly as a fife, but um, similar strengths, similar problems. So a bit like a fife can't kick either, but has the ball winning and um, marking capabilities. So um, do watch out for Erasmus. I think he'll be a really good player in the long run and probably breaks his way in at some point this year is to be a regular. Elijah Hollands don't think we'll be seeing him regularly for Gold Coast or at least to start the season, but I do think he'll probably break in and then from there probably become a regular. So um, really good talent. He was a top 10 pick for a reason, but um, yeah, we just need to see him healthy first, probably get those stretcher games in the VFL and then from there um, I think he'll sort of I guess, carve out a niche for himself at AFL level. Maybe it's whether it's across half forward wing to start out with would be my expectation. Finley McRae, I think we'll see him probably as a regular for Collingwood this year, but I don't think this is his breakout year, where I think possibly more next year would be what I'd be thinking. Where although he's stronger this year, he's still not really, I guess, winning the volume of contested ball or finding that much of the footy yet. So um, I think it's a bit of a wait scenario for a Finlay McRae. Um, but at least it's sort of adding to Collingwood's young core, which is something. So I think that'll be a positive to having him in at least. Um, Josh Sin, look, if Lockie Jones could only play, I think it was six games last year. I don't think we'll see much of Sin this year. So um, he can generate drive from defense, but doesn't belong anywhere in the rising star market. Sam DeConing, I think, is probably going to have a little bit better season than a Josh Gibkiss, given he's those few years older at least, so could establish himself as a regular, um, but not a rising star chance. Um, Connor McDonald could establish himself as a regular for Hawthorne, um, but really just an accumulator through the mids. Um, yeah, I don't think he'll necessarily be one of the top players. Could get a nomination if he becomes a regular, but have to see. And um, Denver Granger Barras, look, I think he probably becomes a regular for Hawthorne. And again, I'd probably have him even higher in this group where I think he's a little bit better than a De Koning and I think he's a fair bit better than a Josh Gibkiss. So um, personal opinion there. But um, yeah, look, I think with a Granger Barras being that year older than a Gibkiss and being a better talent than a De Koning, that's sort of where I stand there. But um, yeah, I think he'll at least get a nomination this year would be my expectation of a Granger Barras. Um, Morris Rioli, look, he's a pressure forward role player. That's really just what he brings to the table. So I think Richmond will introduce more games into him this year. But um, whether he's the best 22 or to start the season, probably not. But um, maybe later on, maybe he can sort of become that regular. Um, I won't go through too many more of these games, these names, maybe just a few more of interest. Maybe a O'Driscoll, look, I don't think he'll start the year, but I think he'll get a stretch at some point, probably as a mid, but... You could play him on a wing half back if you want. Davies, I think he'll have a good year for the Suns and he could establish himself as a regular. Um, good ball winner. He's, he's a really promising tall mid, so I think Gold Coast will be pretty motivated to get games into him. Um, Kemp, look, hopefully we see him pretty regularly. Um, have to see, can he establish himself? Can he get healthy? So um, hopefully he just gets a good run at AFL level. And then from here, we've got a lot of players that basically may not even play. So like if I look at a Jaya miss, I don't think we probably see him this year. And if we do, maybe it's a small taste later on. So it's basically a story with him of, well, look, he was 
playing Waffle Colts, but he wasn't even really able to train with his team during the year, just living 200 Ks plus away from his team. So didn't really go through the junior pathways for those years before all that much. So look, it's hard for those sorts to really get opportunities, even if Freeman are sort of shorter key forward. Mac Andrew, unicorn, but yeah, it'll take time to develop. So um, just some interesting names that I think will probably have good seasons. Hugo Ralph Smith, I think he'll have a good season. I think he gets nominated, can be a regular for Richmond. Um, so certainly watch out for him. Um, Baldwin, I think, starts round one, but yeah, don't expect much from him. Um, second year key forward, well, he could establish himself as a regular, but he's not going to find a heap or do a heap this year would be what I'd be thinking. Max Holmes could establish himself as a regular for Geelong. Um, really actually surprised me quite a bit last year, looking as comfortable as he did and going as well as he did in the VFL. So he's a player to certainly watch out for. Um, Ollie Henry, I think he'll be a regular for Collingwood, promising as that sort of medium marking forward. So um, yeah, I think he'll have a pretty good year. Um, others of interest, um, Sam Darcy is hurt for the first half of the year. Um, and he's a long-term player where I, I really wouldn't, I couldn't care less what he does this year. It's about who he is sort of three, four years from now. So, um, he's one to be patient on, um, any others of interest that could be good. Uh, Mitch Owens looked really good for the Saints in the Amy game. So, um, it's possible he gets a bit of a taste and he was someone where really he was a rapid developer last year. So it'll be interesting to see, can he keep taking those steps for the Saints this year? And he's got a lot of versatility. He's not just a mid, he can play outside, he can be a flanker. You've got a lot of options there. Ned Long, I thought he was the best in the rookie draft. I think Hawthorne will actually give him some opportunities this year. Is that not only as a tall ball winning mid, but he can go forward, take a grab, hit the scoreboard. So um, there's a bit of promise there. Um, any others that really stick out? Nick Martin, I think, could be a regular for Essendon, so um, watch out for him. Um, yeah, just really developed quite well um, in the last few years in WA, and yeah, he's actually really surprised me during the preseason, looking as capable as he has for Essendon. So um, yeah, it's one for the Bombers fans to be looking out for. Um, yeah, and really, I guess, Reef McGuinness for Collingwood fans out there, I think, we probably won't see him at the start of the year, but he went pretty well in his practice game. And look, I think he'll keep developing and I think he'll probably get a stretch at AFL level this year. So um, I think given he's that sort of taller mid, later bloomer, has a lot of scope to develop, I think in a few years he'll come good as well. So um, yeah, one for Pies fans to get excited by.